We're going to set up Pi Star in a four part video. This is information that was captured during a two hour live stream I did in late 2020. And I took all of the great information about the Pi Star itself. I cut out all of the live stream uh, chat info and I put it together into a four part video series. And we're going to get started right now. Hope you enjoy it. Shut up and sit down. Thanks for coming out tonight, everybody. We are going to be talking about Pi Star here tonight. Mm. And we're going to set up Pi Star from scratch. I'm not going to dig real deep. It There's a lot of robust custom programming you can do with PyStar. I've done some of it, but I'm not an expert on it by any stretch. And um, I can answer some questions. So what your questions uh, that you have about PyStar tonight, uh, go ahead and put in the chat. And Frank's going to try to answer them. Uh, he's going to try to keep them, keep a record of them, and we'll answer them as we go. That's yep. what I'm trying to say. One thing I will say is that there are multiple types of Pi Star hotspots in the world today. You can choose to, um, you can choose to build one. You can choose to purchase one. There's a bunch of different ones out there. Once you get into the front end or to the to the programming side of them, they're all basically the same and they all basically do the same thing. The differences are going to be that some of them have screens and some of them do not. Some of them have battery. Well, one of them now has a battery. The R-Finder HCP-1 has a battery. I think that's the only Pi Star hotspot that I'm aware of that has a battery. The OpenSpot 3 has a battery, but it's not Pi Star. So as far as I know, there might be one or two others out there. I haven't tried all of them. I've tried a lot of them, but I haven't tried all of them. Um, but the one we're going to be using tonight is this TGIF spot right here. This is the one with the smaller screen. I've got the one with the larger screen right here. I have it plugged in right now. So, so, so that the one that you have now, um, yep. it's an all-in-one package. It is an all-in-one package, yes. It comes with the screen. It comes with the antenna. It comes with this acrylic case around it. This is a C4 Labs case. And um, you can see that the, the larger screen on this one, the smaller screen on this was his first model. This is his newest and latest model. And um, he's got a USB stick on it as uh, option as well, but uh, but tonight we're going to be using this uh, this smaller screened model because I haven't done anything with it in a while. So does that come with Pi Star um, pre-installed it, on it the SD card? It does. It does. It nice. does. It does come with Pi Star. Now, yeah. In fact, you bring up a good point. Let me preface this: if you're building your own hotspot and installing Pi Star, Pi Star. The Pi Star OS and configuring the OS from like uh, imaging the, the SD card and flashing it on a Windows box or a Mac um, desktop and flashing it and then putting it in there and booting. Um, we're not going to do that tonight. Well, I mean, you, there's ways to do that. Um, it's not that hard. But once you boot up to Pi Star the first time, you're going to be seeing basically what you, what we see tonight. That's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna start from tonight. I, I did a video on that and I just put it to the um, posted a link on the channel. Okay. Built um I built a nano um, MMDV board from scratch. It wasn't that hard. Um, Do you have it running right now? Yes. Are what are what uh, talk groups have you been monitoring? Um, at home, I mostly monitor the Texas statewide and okay. Texas wide, North okay. Texas wide. Um, well, that North Texas wide is not on. Brandmeister. Well, are you connected to Brandmeister? Or Brandmeister. Two? Okay, yeah. So North Texas Wide's not on Brandmeister, but uh, I but, keyed it up. But well, yeah, you can key it up, but there's probably no one you're listening to. It's probably not going across the repeater. Oh, yeah. I didn't so, know that part. Yeah, yeah. We can, we'll have to bring that up on a later episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So yeah, so we're gonna be looking at this tonight, and then let me switch over here, and I've got this other view to go to. Okay, so this is the Pi Star dashboard when you first log into it. Okay. The, uh, let me preface this by saying a lot of these hotspots that have a screen will let you do, in fact, especially this one here, this guy here um, has a screen, 
And when you boot this up, the first one you buy this, this it's the T, it's tgifspot.com is the website. You go out there and you buy this one. And I believe the smaller one does this as well, but I've not done it on the smaller one yet. This guy right here, when you boot it up the first time, there'll be a button. It's a touch screen. There'll be a button on the screen that says scan Wi-Fi. You can scan your Wi-Fi, find your SSID, connect to it, enter your password, and connect the Pi Star device, the, the a hotspot device, to your Wi-Fi with never having to log into the dashboard. Okay, now not all Pi Stars do that. Um, the new SkyBridge from uh, Bridgecom doesn't do that because it doesn't have really kind of the same screen. Um, there's there's a couple of there's uh, there's a there's a couple of really good zoom spots, but I don't think they do that yet. One of them might. I'm not 100% familiar with those. But this TGI off, TGIF spot will let you scan ambient Wi-Fi. So it's good if you're taking it on vacation, taking it somewhere, going on a road trip, and once you get destinated, you set it up and you're like, oh hey, I want to connect to the Wi-Fi here. So you scan again, hit on uh, choose the SSID enter your password, and the the, uh, the hotspot itself will connect to ambient Wi-Fi with just the screen, never having to log into it. So that's really fun. Um, it does have a, this one has a 3 plus B board in it, Pi 3 plus B board in it. So does this one. Some of them have Pi 0 boards. You can run Pi Star on a Pi 0 board. Um, and, uh, and the new Pi 4 board will run it too as well, obviously. But um, it, if you don't have that option. If you don't have the option to scan your ambient Wi-Fi and connect to it over the screen of your device, what you can do is uh, Wi-Fi is by, or I'm sorry, Pi Star by default is set into what's called AP mode. AP is access point mode. That is, if you want to look at this right here, let me pull this up. Uh, we're going to configuration. Access point mode is this right here, auto AP, and it is defaulted to on. So what that means is when you plug in and power up Pi Star the very first time and it has no internet connection, if it has no internet connection either via Ethernet or via Wi-Fi, it's going to go into auto AP mode. So basically it's going to start to broadcast an SSID called Pi Star or something of the like. This one's set up to broadcast TGIF Pi Star. Uh, the SkyBridge, I think, is set up to broadcast SkyBridge, but you can uh, basically find it that way by connecting to you. And then you take your phone, your tablet, or your laptop, and you connect to that SSID. It'll tell you, your phone or laptop will tell you, hey, there's no internet. And you just say, okay, that's fine. Once you connect to your SSID, you can open a browser, and you and sometimes it'll open for you and sometimes it won't. If it doesn't open for you, you can put in the IP address of 192.168.50.1 and it'll pull up this dashboard right here that you're seeing right now. And you can go into configuration right here and scroll down and you can do a configure Wi-Fi. This, these are all the ones I've, I've got configured right here now. And I can go scan networks for 10 seconds. While that's scanning, can you bump up the volume a little bit for us? On me? Or uh, all of us. I'm getting the reports of we're a little weak. Okay. I thought I was talking too loud. No. Which I have a habit of doing. Well, I know, and I have a habit of doing the opposite. Yeah. Of getting quiet. <laughs> yeah. So, so now, that I've, now that I've connected via access point from my phone or tablet or laptop or whatever, and scan for uh, scan for networks. It'll tell me these are all the networks that it's scanned for right now. So you can, and it's just 2.4 gigahertz. There is no 5 gigahertz in Pi Star. At least most of them don't have that. Um, and then you can click on select, and it will enter let, allow you to enter the password. And then it will save it in one of these pre-configured network spots. So you can see I've got network zero. My SSID at home is QRZ. Mm -hmm. Go figure. Okay. My network in Galveston is Latitude Adjustment. That's the name of my house in Galveston. Hamfest Vendors, I think that was a, I think that was when I went to the Orlando Hamcation. I don't even remember what that is. V3, I don't remember what that is. And not Paylocity, I don't know what, remember what that is either. But I've got, but you can save these SSIDs and passwords in here so that the next, so that if you take the Pi Star with you to a ham fest or to a hotel or to somewhere else and you connect okay fine you're using it then you go back home it'll automatically connect once it sees your home ssid wi-fi again because it's pre-saved in the device 
So it allows you to enter and save multiple Wi-Fi networks so that you don't have to put it back into AP mode and do a scan and click on the screen or whatever and do that multiple times throughout the, uh, the whole, every time you move it around and mm-hmm. every time you use it. Mm-hmm. So let me pause there for a second. What, uh, what kind of questions are we having, if any? Um, got one from T-Man. Okay. Um, paraphrasing a little bit, um, can I use the Pi for All Star and something else at the same time, or is it stuck with uh, Ham Voice over IP software only? You can use a Pi for All Star. Yes, if you got a bigger micro SD card, you could partition a drive so that it it allows you to to do a dual boot and choose which OS you want to boot into each time to use it. Um, that wouldn't be using it both at the same time, but that would allow you to use the same device for two different applications at different times. Um, but it is, I'm not sure what, I'm not sure of anyone who's ever done it at the same time before I put it that way. Somebody in the chat says Raspbian Ubuntu is the OS. Uh, yeah, kind of on the back end it is. They don't really use Raspbian anymore. Uh, Raspbian is the older OS. Um, Raspbian is Debian based, which Ubuntu is Debian. You you said Ubuntu. It's actually Debian based. That's why it's called Raspbian. Um, and PyStar runs on top of that, but it's not really, it's the PyStar is the operating system because it, it, when you log into it the first time it takes over and yeah, you've got Raspbian running on the under level. And if you're a really big Linux guru, you can probably get to that and do what you want to. There is a command line, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit, which you can go in and do command line commands. Um, so you can run it that way, but I'm I'm still not aware of anyone who's run PyStar and Hanvu IP on the run, on the same device before. So I think you're pro- with as cheap as Pi Raspberry Pis are. I think you're probably creating new problem creating problems for yourself to try to do it all on the same board. I say get two di- different Raspberry Pis, put Hanvu IP on one, put PyStar on one, and then have two radios: one DMR D Star and one analog for All Star. More radios is never a bad thing. I agree with that. So, <laughs> so that's the, uh, that's the. Uh, um, I had several people in the chat says the Pi Star is an application that runs on top of Linux, and then technically it- that's true. But again, you know, you can't. You, it's not like you boot up the uh, the Raspberry Pi and then you come to a Raspbian screen and have to log into Pi Star. It's all automatic. The way that Pi Star is streamlined. It. Yes, it's streamlined. Especially yeah. if you download yes. these Pi Star um, software image. from the yeah, yeah. image yeah. from the website. Uh-huh. Um, there may be a way, and I don't know mm-hmm. what it is, mm-hmm. to install it on top of Ubuntu or something else. Then I've never you... seen it installed on Ubuntu, but it's it it is an application. But for the layman, for the person who doesn't know any better, for the non technical geek, if you guys all want to get technical and start talking about level three Linux crap, uh, go over there uh, because we're this not it's not it's not the <laughs> that's not the audience we're going for right now. Uh, not to you, but Aww. just just over there. But uh, yeah, technically speaking, you're right. It's a it's an application that runs on top of the OS. But the 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 person who doesn't, who's not a Linux guru is never going to know that because, again, once you boot it up, it, it goes directly into PyStar and it all runs through PyStar. So, and the question was, can you run, can you run VOI, ham VOIP or ASL and PyStar on the same box? I don't know because I've never seen anyone do that. I imagine that you probably can, but it probably is going to make it much more complicated. So, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't jack with it myself, but that's me. That's, that's me. So, it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't go from there. So, um, you can do that. The cool thing about those the cool thing about Raspberry Pis is they're not expensive and micro SD cards are even cheaper than the Pi is. So if you screw it up, reimage it, start over again and, and go from there. So you can do all kinds of good experimenting experimentation with it. So Pi star works the same way. It is an application that runs on top of, of a Raspbian type watered down Debian based Linux OS. But for the person who's brand new to it, who cares? That's not, it's not what they care about. They care about the fact that when it boots up, it's going to go to PyStar. When it boots up, when you boot up All-Star Link, it's going to go to ASL and whatnot. So there we go. Now that you have entered your... Let me get back to the right screen over here. Now that you have entered your SSID and password information and you click on Save and Connect, it should come back and connect to the Wi-Fi that you're in and the uh, the uh, the application itself will reboot, and you should see it come up to where you're looking at something like this. Um, when it, when it reboots, it'll come to the dashboard, and then you can go to configuration, 
and scroll down and you can see it's connected. This interface is up green text will show right here once it's connected. If it doesn't connect after you scan the SSID, enter your password and click on connect and it looks like the application is stopped and restarted. If it still doesn't connect, reboot the device. I've noticed that PyStar is a little bit buggy. Sometimes when you make major changes to it, just doing a, a, a solid reboot will fix the issue. So if you can get back into the dashboard via the AP or via um, an Ethernet cable, you can go to power here and click on power at top and you can click on reboot right there and reboot it softly that way. If you have to unplug it and wait like 15 or 20 seconds to plug it back in, you can do that too. There's a lot of disagreements in the in the uh, pi star world right now that says if you unplug and do a um non um wh what's it called a um I, there's a word for it but if you don't do a proper shutdown and restart it can damage the uh, the operating system and the the apple the pi star application i have read numerous accounts of that online i have never had it happen to me and every time you go in and make changes in the command lines uh, part of the OS or of the um, in the in the back end Linux uh, command line, you have to, it. It's automatically in read only mode, and you have to physically change it to read write mode. RPI dash RW enter changes it to read write mode because by default it's in RPI dash RO read only mode. So to me, it doesn't really make a lot of sense that you have to, that it's going to mess up something in the operating system by powering it down by just unplugging it and waiting half a minute and, and plugging it back in to reboot. But again, I've never had that happen to me, but some other people have, have sworn up and down that it will happen to them. My suggestion is always do a, always do a proper shutdown and restart if you can. Sometimes it locks up. You don't have that information. You don't have that ability. Um, I've had that happen to my Windows box. And yes, I've had it happen on a Mac. My church uses Macs, and we have Macs lock up, and you have to the power to them sometimes. Um, but try to do a proper shutdown and restart anytime that you can on any OS. It can mess up stuff, you know, in theory. And if you mess up an operating system, a free Pi Star operating uh, image, Raspbian, okay, let's put it this way. A free Raspbian operating system running PyStar on the image that you can download and re-image again on a, on a $10 micro SD card. Okay, big deal. Um, but yeah, you can, but, so try to do it as much as you can. Try to do it, uh, try to do a proper um, shutdown and restart as much as you can. 